All right, so today we are talking about transformations. We are going to take some graph and basically pick it up and slide it around the graph. Okay, so if you take a look at this first function, we're just given some random function. This is what it looks like, right? So what happens if you take some function and then you add or subtract a number from it? So for example, if I took this function exactly as it is, and then I added three to it. So it kind of looks like this, right? So um, I kind of wish that, I wish that I had color copies for you, but I don't. So I have the original regraphed right here. So there's my original. And then when I added three to everything, it just shifted everything up three units. Do you see how every point is just moved up? So, if I take some function and then add three to it after the fact, just shifting it up. Same thing happens if I subtract a value, I'm just gonna move everything down instead. So, pretty easy. If I have a function and then I add or subtract a number on the end to it, that's just going to result in a vertical shift, either up or down, depending on whatever the number is. And I literally just take each point and I just move them. So if I could graph the parent function of something and then I added two to the end of it, let's say, all you'd have to do is take that parent function and move it up two, right? Yeah, easy enough. So if you could graph y equals x squared, for example, which you can, because I know you just did it, it's just a parabola and has its vertex on the origin and they have all the points, right? Then that means you could now graph y equals x squared plus 6, right? Wouldn't you just take that parent function and move it up 6? So, and I could change this to whatever. y equals x squared minus 2.5. Wouldn't you just take it and slide it down 2.5? Yeah, so you don't have to, like, reinvent the wheel. You already know how to graph the y equals x squared part. And then if I just have a plus or a minus number on the end of it, that's just a vertical shift up or down. Easy peasy? Okay, great. So there's a lot of other things I can do to my graph though besides moving it up or down. Can't I move it left or right? You betcha I can. So if we take a look down at the bottom, that's what's happening here. It looks a little confusing, but Let's break it down. You still have the same parent function in the middle there. So that's that same one at the very top of your paper. Same thing right here. Now, what's weird about this is that you're basically going to do the opposite of what you see. When you want to move it left or right, you're doing that inside of the function, right? So you're going to move your graph left or right h units, h just being how whatever that number is. H could be any number. So I'm just gonna pick it up and move it left to right. But here's the difference. If I see X plus H inside the function, I'm actually going to move this many units to the left. So it's the opposite of what you see here. Same thing happens if I wanted to move it to the right, you're going to see a minus H in there, but that really means go positive H units to the right. Okay, so if when we're shifting left and right, it's really the opposite of what we see in the function. So if you look at our example here, let's just focus on this one. So here was my original parent, and then I moved it to the right too. In the function, that's what it's gonna look like. It's gonna look like x minus two. So I just need to remember, if a number is inside the function, in there with the x, I'm going to do the opposite of what it says. If I have a number outside of the function and it's just like tacked on to the end, that's an up or a down shift. And I do exactly what it says. So that really means go down four. But this, when it's in there with the X, I have to remember to do the opposite of what I see. So I will not be moving. That means go right to. So we pick up every point and we shift it to the right two units. Does that make sense? Same thing is happening over here. I'm just going to the left four. So that's what it looks like. It looks like a plus four. Okay, Miss Sabia, this is too abstract. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, 
let's do it with the x squared example, right? So what if I did this now? Isn't that still just a parabola? Right? It's still a quadratic, so this thing is still going to come out as a parabola, but now you have a number in there with the x. So what do you want to do? You want to do the opposite of what it says. And if it's in there with the x, it's telling me to go left or right. So this thing would go left one unit. So I would just take that parent function of the x squared, just like you've been drawing, and I would just pick up every single point, just move it to the left one. What would happen if I did this? Yeah, it does both, right? I'm not only going to do one shift every time. Sometimes I'll do two things. I might move it left or right and up or down. So this is going left one and down three. So I'd start off with my parent function, and then I would take each point and move each point left one down three. You see that? So if it's in there with the X, it's a left or right shift, and you do the opposite of what you see. If it's tacked onto the end, then it's a vertical shift, and I really do what it tells me to do. Does this make sense so far? You've seen this before, right, at some point? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, there's other things we can do to graphs, too, isn't there? What happens when you put a negative out in front of the whole thing? Yes, it flips it right over that x-axis. So we have the original as it was. But if we put a negative out in front of the whole thing, it just flips it right on over. And it's easy if you think about basic examples with this, like y equals x, right? If you think about what y equals x looks like, it's just that line, right? That goes through the origin, up one over one. But, so that's y equals x. And then what's y equals negative x look like? It goes this way. Right? Starts at zero and goes down one over one. So that really is, if I had, if I just took this and I made f negative, the f of x negative, couldn't I just end up here, dividing both sides by negative one? So it can be helpful to just think about it in real life. Like, what? give me an example of what happens. If you don't remember what that does to a graph, just take a graph that you know and try it. And then see what happens to it. It's going to flip it upside down. You could go back to, oh yeah, let's go back to the parabolas that we've been talking about. Y equals X squared looks like that, right? But if I put a negative on the Y, I'm gonna divide both sides by that negative one, so I end up here, don't I? And what's this graph look like? It's upside down. Down like a frown, I like to say. This one's up like a cup. So, any hoosers, if I have a negative out in front, I'm just going to flip the whole thing over that x-axis. So far, so good? Okay, let me give you one and you tell me what, what would be done to it. What if your graph or your equation looked like this? What would that mean to do to the parent function of y equals x squared? So, well, let's go piece by piece. What is this going to do to it? Yeah, so now it's flipped upside down. So now I have a down like a frown graph. And then what does this minus 3 in there with the x tell me to do? Go to the right 3. And how many do I move up or down? None, because I don't have a number tacked on over here. Ooh, tricky. Isn't this fun? <laughs> I guess that depends how you define fun, huh? Fun for math, right? Anyway. Oh, jeez Louise. Okay. Uh, what else can we do? We can reflect this thing over the x-axis. How do we do that? 
we go in there and we make x negative itself. So that's different than this. So this was putting a negative outside in front of the whole thing. Okay, so now I'm plugging in a negative x here and that's going to flip everything over that y axis. So my parabola example wouldn't be a good one here because even if you flipped a parabola about the uh, y axis, doesn't it just stay a parabola? Yeah, so let's try maybe the square root graph. Oh, but I, Yeah, I can't. Oh, yeah, I can. I can do that, yeah. So think about this parent function. Looks like that, right? Right? So if I did this. Now, think on this. If I plug in here, I can't plug in negative 1, right? I can't because everything would break. But can't I plug in negative 1 now? What comes out? Now positive 1 comes out because negative negative 1 is now positive 1 and square root 1 is 1. So that's going to make this graph go this way. When I plug it, well, I can still do 0. Plug in 0, 0 comes out. But when I plug in negative 1, positive 1 comes out. When I plug in negative 4, what comes out? Positive 2. Do you see that? So now I made that graph. I put the negative on the x inside the function and it flipped it over that y-axis. How cool. Oh my goodness. What else can we do to a graph? We can stretch it and shrink it. So if you take a look at the very bottom, what we've done here, here's my original. Same original function that we've been dealing with. And then if I go ahead and I multiply by some value, I'm going to stretch or shrink my graph accordingly. Okay, so if I multiply everything by a half, for example, now I take every y value and see how this one was at negative four? Now the y values are gonna come out half as large. So now it's at negative two. Uh, this y value that was at one, now it's at a half. This y value that was at three, now it's at one and a half. I'm taking everything and I'm multiplying the y values by a half. Here, same idea, but now I'm gonna double them. So I would multiply all my y values instead of being at negative, was that four, now it's at negative eight. Instead of being at one, now it's at two. Where it was at three, now it's at six. So if I have a number out in front here, that's either going to shrink my graph if it's something between 0 and 1, or it's going to stretch my graph and make it really big if it's some number bigger than 1. And the bigger the number, the bigger the stretch, right? So if I plugged a 10 in there, it would stretch it that much further. Does that make sense? Yeah, OK. All right. Let's see, what else we got here? Um, okay, now we're going to do the same thing, but now we're kind of like an accordion, right? Now we're going to like squish them together or pull them apart. So if we're looking at this next page, and then again, when I put things in there with the X, I really have to do the opposite of what I'm seeing. Okay, so this first one, so take a, it's a little hard to see here, but maybe we should, um, maybe I'll highlight my original. So this is, that one was my original. Okay, and then this actually produced this one. I want to do the opposite of what I'm seeing. I know it says times two, but I really want to think of that as half because I want to do the opposite of what I'm seeing, right? Anything that's in there with the X, I'm doing the opposite. So my, I'm going to accordion shrink it by two. And then if I have a half, that's going to produce this guy out here. So it's going to stretch them wider. Does that make sense? Okay. 
What else can we do? These poor functions. We can also reflect it over the line y equals x. This has a fancy name, okay? It's called the F inverse of x. And that's how you write it. See there with that uh, negative one exponent? It's not really F to the negative one power. That's read the inverse of x. So if you've never seen that, that's what that is. Inverse. Oh, sorry, F inverse of X. And what it means is to basically reflect it over this Y equals X line. So again, if I trace that original, which was here, there's my original, and then you're reflecting it over this diagonal line. So this piece that was here is now mirrored this way. When I went here, I mirror it here. See how each part is just mirrored over that? You see that? So in order to create that graph, if you don't have it, if you just need to get the function, you're just gonna swap X and Y with each other. We'll be doing a lot of practice with these in a little bit. So you swap X and Y. There you go, you would now have the F inverse of X. Okay, and that's it for these. So, I have a couple for you to practice. We can do a few together if you like. Cheese paper. <laughs> okay, if you would like to use, um, if you have, I think I might have some colored pencils, but colored pencils never really erase well. But if you want, or you could highlight your, or use a highlighter to draw your original. Now listen, I don't ever need to see the parent function. So that's not, you won't be, um, unless I specifically say, draw the parent function and then do this. So if this were a quiz or a test and you just had, um, I don't know. So like the first one, you have to graph the parent function because that's all that it is. But if I was asking you to graph, oh, I don't know, y equals x squared plus three. If you didn't draw y equals x squared first and then shift it, that doesn't matter to me. I think it's easier to graph it first and then move it around, but that's your choice. So what you're gonna do in the very first box, that's calling for you to graph that parent function. Do you remember what this one looks like? Where do I start? Yeah, start at zero, zero. Do I go negative? No, you can't plug negatives in here. And then I get one, one, right? And then the next one is four, two. And I don't even have to go any further because I'm pretty much done. 
So in your first box, you're graphing the parent function. Now in the second box, if we just slide over to the right, letter A is just asking you to take that same function. It does say f of x. I know I hole punched right through it. but So that wasn't f of x. So now I want to do f of x, in other words, my parent function, and then add 3 to the end of it. So what's this going to do to the whole thing? Yeah, I'm just going to take each point that I had made prior and move it up 3. So now instead of starting at the origin, I'm starting right there. Do you see that? And then this next point was at 1, 1, but now I'm going to go up 3 units from there. I was at 4, 2, but now I go up 3 units from there. So my new graph looks like that. So this is the graph of if I replace f of x with my function. So it would just be the square root of x plus 3. That's what you just graphed. What is this one going to do to it? B. What did you say? Yes, I'm plugging in a value in there with the x. So I need to remember, if the number is in there with the x, I'm doing the opposite of what it says. So I know it says plus 5, but I need to be thinking, okay, that means the opposite. I want to go left 5. So I'm going to take my original guy. We're always going from the original, right? You're not going from the last one that you just did. From the original, I'm going to pick each one of these dots up and move it to the left 5. So instead of starting at the origin, I'm starting here. And then just do the same thing with all your other values. Sometimes what I do to make my life easier is once I figure out my starting point, right, instead of at the origin, I'm here, I just kind of pretend that that's the origin. And then I would normally graph 1, 1, right? So I'm just calling this 1, 1, even though in real life that's not 1, 1 at all. But it is 1, 1 if that's my starting point. 1, 1, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2 can save me from counting boxes and trying to figure out what things are. So if you just treat that as the origin once you find it. Now, let's try C together. What in the world is this going to do to it? Yes, yeah, so what does that make the graph look like now? It's, well, you're right. It's now going to, remember if I multiplied by 2 or by 10 or whatever, it's going to stretch the graph up? Well, it's going to shrink it if it's like if you multiply by a half or by a third or by a fourth. Now, what does this negative do to the whole thing, though? It's going to flip it upside down. So two things are going on here. The negative flips it upside down, and then the two is going to make it taller. So I can do both of those at the same time if I just multiply all the y values by negative two. So I normally... Uh, I start at 0, 0, right? If I take 0 and I multiply by negative 2, what comes out? 0. So this one still starts at the origin. The next point, the y value is positive 1. So my new y value is going to be negative 2. Correct. This y value, when x was 4, I got a y value of 2. So when x is 4, my y value will now be negative 4, right? Because I'm going to multiply each y value by negative 2. So let's drop down negative 4. And this is exactly what we were talking about, what we were expecting to see. My graph got stretched. It's taller now. But it's also flipped upside down because of that negative out in the front. I'm going to find the y values by negative 2. Yep. Yep. All your y values get multiplied there. Until I hit D. Now what's going to happen? Let's talk about what the graph's going to look like. What should this do? If I'm going to multiply in there with the x by 2, what happens? It's going to do what? 
the opposite. Yeah. Remember? Yeah, when it's in there with the x, it's always doing the opposite of what you think it's going to do. So normally, multiplying by 2 would make it bigger, right? But here, my accordion is actually shrinking because I have to do the opposite of what's there. So let's try this with some values, and maybe that will make a little bit more sense. If I plug in a 0, what do I get out? Still 0. So I'm still starting at the origin here. But now I have this like weird situation. Next, I would normally plug in 1. But if I plug in 1, I'm going to multiply it by 2. So if I plugging in a value of 1 for x means that I'm going to take out the square root of 2. Because I'm multiplying whatever x value I plug in, I'm going to multiply it by 2. Let's try, let's skip over 1 for a minute. If I plug in 2 uh, for the x, uh, for x, 2 times 2 is 4, right? Square root of 4 is 2. So when I plugged in 2, I got out 2. Normally, it was when I plugged in 4 that I got out 2. So see how I went from it being here, now I'm squishing it. So the same thing happens when I plug in 1. Well, really, let's plug in a half. That'll work out even better. If I plug in a half, 2 times a half is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. So when I plug in a half, I get out 1. See how my accordion has squished together? Do you see that? It's so weird to think about, right? Because you're so, you're so used to times it by 2 making it bigger. But when it's in there with the x, it actually compresses it. My accordion has squished together. Okay, so you could plug in some more points if you wanted, but that's basically my, I'm squishing it. Hi. Hi. Let me give you the sheet. We are doing 1E right now. All right, 1E. What is happening here? Yes, this is just two of the shifts together. Left two, down six. So it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just going to take that parent function. Instead of starting at 0, 0, now I'm going to be left two, down six. Two, three, four, five. Just have to go one little dot out. So that's my, my new starting point. Okay, so then my other, my next dots would be there. So this one did not change the shape of the graph. I didn't stretch it, shrink it, flip it. I just picked it up and I slid it. So it should be an exact replica of what you have in the very first box, just moved. OK, does this make, make sense? Is everybody all right? Okay, so I'm going to let you try the rest of these. Let me stop.